And now, straight from the Game Changer Studio in Central Wisconsin, it is the Impact Wrestling Homecoming Pre-Show. And here are your hosts, Nate the Effing Great and SoCal Val. You heard that right, ladies and gentlemen. This is for the first time ever. The Game Changer is doing its own version of the pre-show, and we're going to be covering Impact Wrestling Homecoming. Welcome to the special edition of the Game Changer. I am an 8th the and great. And honestly, guys, it wouldn't really be Homecoming unless I had some royalty or a queen, if you will. So I'm being joined here by the governess, the duchess, who I call one of the original knockouts in Impact Wrestling slash TNA. I'm going to be a TNA mark. I apologize to anybody that I might offend with that. The one and only SoCal Val. It's great to have you on. It's going to be awesome talking about Homecoming that is just less than, actually, almost 24 hours away, actually. I know. Isn't this exciting, Nate? Oh, my God. I can tell you this is going to be a great podcast because I already had the nostalgic vibes run in Wild Brother Brother. But when you played those themes, I thought, oh, my gosh, I just have all these memories of being in the Impact Zone for so many years. But I was there about nine years. So to hear those themes is just like it's, it, it's all good memories, though. It's great. And I think it's such a cool, nostalgic, you know, nod to the history of Impact. And I call it TNA as well that they're doing. I think it's really cool that you and I can be a part of it. Definitely, definitely. And let's actually start with that. Let's talk about some of the memories that we have from TNA, because they have actually been around since 2002, 2003, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And they have been going strong for about almost 15, actually almost a little over 15 years. So that is a huge accomplishment for Impact Wrestling slash TNA. And Mm -hmm. I think one of my earliest memories was the fact that my first... uh, TNA event that I saw on pay-per-view was actually uh, Destination X 2006. That was where I got the exposure to guys, uh, even like the early showings of guys like Alex Shelley, Jay Lethal, Team Canada. Uh, There was that huge uh, eight-man war that they had there with, uh, I'm trying to remember the teams. It was Team 3D, Ron Killings, and Rhino taking on Jeff Jarrett, AMW, and the Monster Abyss. I... Absolutely love that matchup. One of my favorites. Uh, First exposure to the Ultimate X match. Trust me, guys, we're going to be talking a lot about that matchup going into the show. Uh, Oh, of course. And it's against one of the best trios that TNA had between Samoa Joe, Christopher Daniels, and AJ Styles. I mean, you kind of look at where they're at right now, and it's really awesome to see where they've come. And, of course, the main event uh, being when they had the NWA world title, which was Christian Cage taking on Monty Brown. All in all, just absolutely great, great show. Uh, first time I even got to see Sting. Well, at that event, he was known as Steve Borden. He came out as his actual, uh, as himself. Mm-hmm. And also, we got the debut of Scott Steiner. So literally, I was like, it's like, wow, did I just tune into like an awesome episode? Oh my gosh, this is an awesome event. I was not expecting Scott Steiner at all. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so funny, even just to hear names like Monty Brown, I mean, that just brings all of the nostalgia running back. Well, he was an awesome talent, and, you know, the fact that we had guys like Sting and Scott Steiner, we had so many great names, and there's so many great TNA originals, as well as icons from, you know, from WWF and WCW. We had a really great mix of people, and now we have, which we'll get into later, we have an entire new roster of people that are hungry, that are talented, and that are stars on the rise, and how, how lucky for them to have great talent now, and also a, a history of having a great roster to begin with. Definitely, definitely. So, as you mentioned before, you've been there for, you were there for about nine years, and that's still quite a bit. So that's at least, geez, it's almost like our three quarters of as long as they've been there. So let me ask you this. What are some great memories that you do remember from uh, your time there in TNA? Oh, my gosh, there's so many great memories, but I have to say, you know, it it depends on what what era we're talking about, because, for example, you know, what I I actually did, which is so funny about them doing the homecoming show in the, uh, we called it the Asylum in Nashville, um, my first show with TNA, a lot of people don't even realize, my very first show with TNA was actually, 
I believe it was January 2003, and it was myself, Roderick Strong, who's obviously doing very well, very prominent name in wrestling, uh, his partner, Cedric Strong, also two indie uh, talents, um, uh, Bruce Santee and um, Steve Madison. We all went there, and I was managing the Strong Brothers. And we all did an episode of Explosion at the Asylum in January 2003. I think I was about 17 or so. And it was it was a great night for me. It was a huge opportunity. My mom and I actually, when we drove up 10 hours from Orlando, we drove up to Nashville. And it was a huge, huge deal for me because it was TV. It was pay-per-view. And um, it was a great opportunity for me. But then eventually I got with, you know, TNA when it came to Orlando. And I was so lucky to be able to part to be a part of so many different eras of TNA. We were on Fox Fortnet at first, then we eventually got the huge deal, which was Spike TV. And I'm, do you remember watching it on Spike TV, Nate? Oh my gosh! When they made it to Spike TV, it was just absolute, just pure nostalgia. Yeah. <laughs> no, and, and that's the thing, yeah, because Spike TV such a it was such a big name, you know, it's such a big name, and it was it was so you know, monumentous for us to be on, on a network like that. To me, that was kind of when I believe TNA was was in its heyday. It's by TV, that whole era was just, that was when Daniels, Joe, AJ, Kazarian, they were all on the top of their game doing matches against each other. And it was kind of more TNA originals, um, you know, really making a name for themselves. Then we kind of go forward, and we fast forward to days where we had started to have the influx of the WWE, ex-WWE guys. And for a while, it was really cool. It was like, you know, Christian Cage was coming, and Ric Flair, and Kurt Angle, and Sting. And it was amazing. The only thing I will say, like, towards the end, it got a little bit, like, convoluted, whereas, like, everybody was more WWE than it was TNA, and that got a little weird. But I think, to me, personally, the most golden era that I could say in TNA was kind of that Spike TV era. I would say, like, you know, my storyline with Jimmy Bill were, like, 2008, 2009. <laughs> Excuse me, getting over a cold. I'm not allergic to wrestling, I promise. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, those, those kind of heydays, it was, like, Spike TV, maybe around, like, 2006 to 2010 or so, right? And then, you know, for me, those were the times where it was a lot of us that were kind of I don't want to say originals, we were there from day one, but a lot of the originals were there. James Storm, Jeremy Borash, Abyss, Jeff Jarrett, they were all there, and they were all, like, you know, putting their all in, into the company, and we had all of our guys, and then it kind of, you know, shifted towards the more WWE side, which was also a cool era, but my favorite era, I think, was around that Spike TV deal, because um, I felt so lucky to be a part of the company, and the entire nine-year run was amazing, I loved so much. I physically and literally grew up in that company. Man, I was 18 when I started with that company. And all these guys were my big brothers, and it was just so great to get to know all of them and, and the girls as well. And we're all friends to this day. So it's just, it's so cool that not only are they all doing well and we're all happy and, and we all keep in touch, but the fact that they're not having this impact homecoming pay-per-view that you and I can discuss is so cool because we can walk down that memory lane. But, as I said earlier, we can also still you know, give the respect and the attention and the spotlight to the people that deserve it now that are making impact, you know, just as great as it ever was. Definitely, definitely. Uh, yeah, you mentioned that gold, golden era. I do remember watching Impact throughout that entire, you know, four-year tenure, and I do agree that there was a lot of really good stuff that happened there. A lot of really great, you know, storylines, a lot of great uh, moments. You mentioned, you know, Kurt Angle getting involved. We got that great rivalry between Kurt Angle and Samoa Joe that a lot of people were oh, not yeah. expecting to uh, see. And I actually remember this one video that uh, they, that somebody did where they basically were trying to just, you know, quote-unquote, bury John Cena. I'm not trying to bury John Cena, but it's just one of those things where it's kind of funny because it was during the feud that uh, Triple H and him had, and they were just saying, like, Oh, you know, people were talking about this match between you and me for years ago, and they were just saying, like, uh, no, they were talking about Samoa Joe and Kurt Angle during that year. And I'm just thinking, <laughs> wait a minute, yeah. see, this happened during this time? It's like, oh, yeah, that's right. People were, were talking more about Kurt Angle and Samoa Joe because yeah. it was an absolutely amazing match matchup between them. Actually, like, uh -huh. geez, they had, like, three matches in a matter of those months. It was just awesome. The storyline they told was just great. And yeah. it, uh, the ultimate payoff was in the end, Samojo getting his world title uh, run after beating Kurt Angle at Lockdown, which, oh my gosh, that was still a really good matchup. Anything lockdown that, was one of the best pay-per-views of the year. I'm, I mean, I'm sure you agree. It was always, you always knew that Lockdown was going to be a real game changer. Oh, I just did a cheap plug. I didn't mean to. <laughs> you know what? It's totally fine. When you do it, it's just one of those things I consider to be a compliment. When a certain other company, <laughs> when a, the other company known as WWE decides, oh, this person's going to be a game changer. I'm like, I think I might need to sue for copyrights. You know what? 
I think they I think that your royalty check is still in the mail, so don't worry. <laughs> either, <laughs> either that or they just lost my address, something like that. But all maybe, right. Maybe. So we've talked a lot about the great memories of TNA. We talked a lot about the past. Let's talk about the present. Let's talk about the future of Impact Wrestling and TNA as we discuss T- Impact Wrestling Homecoming, which is going to be happening tomorrow, guys, live on pay-per-view. And also, for those of you that are great followers of myself and SoCal Val, it is also available on Spike TV. Now, we have actually been doing this kind of promotion where if you've done this deal where you've done a retweet, a follow with us, as well as Fight TV, and also mention your favorite Impact Wrestling slash TNA star, then you will be entered into a sweepstakes in which tomorrow we will announce who is going to be watching T- Impact Wrestling Homecoming for free. What? Did I just say free? I didn't say Fred free Savage. Free That's my favorite price <laughs> I think anytime we do this now, we're just going to have to plug free 99. I'm, I'm making that the hashtag for this show. <laughs> just, oh my gosh. Just, but obviously, guys, we got quite a bit to talk about and quite a bit of compelling matches on here. Eight matches on the card. Let's not waste any time. Let's just dive right into it. Let's talk about it. Uh, first matchup on the card is Allie and Sue Young taking on Kiara Hogan and Jordan Grace. Now, the storyline here is actually pretty, I guess you could say convoluted, but also at the same time pretty straightforward. Basically, Allie has been battling against Sue Young for the last, I want to say, almost year now. And it basically evolved into a deal in which Kiara Hogan got taken to the dark realm. Allie made a deal with Father James Mitchell, one of another great TNA originals, I will say that. Oh my gosh, yeah. 100%. And they, he, she made a deal to sell her soul just to go in and find Kira Hogan. Ever since she came back from the Dark Realm, it has definitely been a different side of Allie. And I've gotten the chance to meet Allie at a StarCast. I've seen her grow throughout her uh, early years here in Impact Wrestling. I have never seen Allie display this kind of dark side and there's a part of me that I don't know if I really like it, but it's one of those things that is kind of very scary, especially for people that looked at her as kind of like this, you know, baby face, as this person who just really is like a clean cut, really nice, sociable girl. Now she's just literally teaming up with Sue Young, and it is one of those things that is a very, very scary pairing when you have the two of them together. Now, this past week on Impact Wrestling, we saw Kara Hogan and Allie compete against each other. Allie would pick up the victory. After the match, they would continue to beat down on uh, Hogan until the one and only Jordan Grace came out, made the save, and that is what caused this matchup. So, we have, again, Jordan Grace versus Kara Hogan taking on Allie and Sue Young. So, Cavell, your thoughts on this uh, matchup, as well as who do you have to pick to win this? Uh, honestly, you, you hit the nail on the head. I, I, I totally agree with you. You know, I've loved Allie. I worked with her in Shine Wrestling. I think she's an amazing talent. But like you said, it's like in her entire personality, her entire effervescent, bubbly attitude was just sucked away. And, and, and the more she became involved with Sue Young, the darker and darker it became. I, I had the pleasure of watching Bound for Glory, which also is available on Fight TV, a little plug there. I watched it here in the UK, and I was like, wow, like you said, I know Allie to be such a, a, a jo- joyous, you know, loquacious girl. She's lovely. And, you know, her involvement with, with Sue Young became where she, you know, it was kind of her enemy. Now all of a sudden she's kind of, it's almost like she's fallen down the rabbit, you know, the, the, the rabbit hole. Like, she's Alice in Wonderland. She's just lost her damn mind. She's gotten into this dark, dark side of herself that we never even knew was there. I'm not sure, even sure if she knew th- th- that it was there. And the thing is, it's kind of exciting to see this transition, but it's kind of frightening as well. Um, for that reason alone, I'm going to give it to Allie and Sue Young, only because I don't know what they're capable of. I think Sue Young, it's a testament to her mind control and a testament to her sort of, you know, um, manipulative ways to, to turn Allie to this dark side that I want to give it to them because I feel like we don't even know what they're capable of. I think it's a great, great opportunity for Jordan and Kira to become, you know, to, uh, TNA knockouts and to kind of impact knockouts, I should say. See, I did it again, Nate. Yeah. I feel like they're going to try to prove themselves and try to make a name for themselves in this company, and that's great, and they're both amazing talents. But while they're doing that, I don't think they realize how sadistic Sue Young is. I've seen her over the years really, really play with people's minds and, and play these mind games. And I think I have to give it to Sue and Allie because I just, you know, the unknown is very scary. 
And I'm actually kind of frightened to think of what they're going to do to these two curls that are these, you know, larger than life characters, that they're wonderful indie talents. This is their time to shine, but I, I wouldn't put it past them to sort of, you know, throw a wrench in the plans and just completely ruin this moment for both of them. No, I definitely do agree, and I will agree with you on this uh, prediction of Ali and Su Young taking the victory. I do think that the dark horse in this entire deal is going to be Jordan Grace. She is just an absolute pure athlete, very strong, She's very great, physical. Yeah. She is just absolutely crazy. Anybody who takes on Brian Cage and can just take a beating and keep on ticking, just absolutely yeah. gives all the respect. The, the issue here that I am going to have with this matchup is the fact that Kira Hogan is very emotional when it comes to this. She feels like she's lost her best friend. She's trying so hard to bring Allie back to the light, but it's really hard to do that. And the thing is, is that I think there's only one person that can really bring Allie back from the dark realm. And it's not Kira Hogan. It's not Jordan Grace. It was her former friend and Demon Buddy cohort, Rosemary. And unfortunately, we haven't seen Rosemary in so long. Is she going to come back? We don't know. That's the crazy part about this. I That's, the, that's where I, you know... That's where I would just end yeah, this copy. Yeah, no, you're right. It makes you wonder because, like I said, you don't know what they're capable of in their sadistic ways, but with, because we haven't seen Rosemary, we wonder if she will be a factor. Um, and, and that's what's so strange, like you said. It's just you don't know what's going to happen, and that's why this match is very exciting. You, they did sort of add it kind of closer to the to the pay-per-view date, didn't they? So it was kind of like a little bit of a surprise. I don't think it's going to actually be one of the best matches on the card, especially in terms of the women's matches, for sure. Definitely, I agree with you. Uh, we have another matchup that was just added this past week, you guys. It is Sammy Callahan taking on Willie Mack. And this matchup is basically just two bulls battling against each other. We have these two guys. Basically, OVE, Ohio versus everything, Sammy Callahan's group has just been running gun-ho ever since they debuted in Impact Wrestling. And they have just been trying to make a name at everybody's expense. Willie Mack is one of the few men that I am seeing where he's basically saying, enough is enough, I'm going to stand up to you guys, and we and I'm going to basically you know, kill this momentum that you have. Uh, I've seen the Mack in quite a few in different matches. I've seen him with, uh, I think it was uh, uh, Chikara as well as uh, PW Gorilla. Uh, but he, most notably, I've seen him in Lucha Underground, where I've seen him as one of this most tough individuals that I could ever imagine. So I'm looking at this matchup and I am seeing these two guys just tearing each other apart and then just uh-huh. keep getting back up and just taking each other to the limit. And for that, it's going to be a tough one toss up, but I'm going to be going with the Mac Willie Mac to get the victory on this one. I foresee stunners for everybody and especially one for Sammy Callahan to pick up the victory here. So Val, what are your thoughts on this matchup, and who have you got to win? So, you know, we always have hashtags for these shows, and I think yep. it's hashtag stunners, stunners for all. It will be, <laughs> it will be a, gr- a great stunning match, pun intended, no matter what happens. And honestly, it's just going to be one of those matches where it's just a lot of fun to watch. It's entertaining, whether you're into sort of that violence that, that, that OVE and that Willie Mack and, and Sammy Callahan are used to, no matter if that's your, your vibe or not. Actually, it's not really my vibe, but I love the both of them so much. It's going to be super fun to watch no matter what. I will say that I love Willie Mack, but I'm going to give it to Sammy Callahan, only because I've seen more of his work this year. He's been a lot of, uh, he's done a lot of shows here in the UK. He was a part of Wrestling Media Con here, with, which was in conjunction with Impact Wrestling. He's just such a great character. He was on the Jericho Cruise. He has absolutely no off button. He's just always on. He's that energetic, crazy, crazy character that's just always entertaining. And I, I, I love him for that. Can he get a little bit of a temper in him? Sure. But that's why we love him. And I think that Sammy Callahan will definitely pull this one out for sure. In my opinion. Oh, boy. Are we going to have a Nate the F and Great versus <laughs> SoCal Val rivalry as far as predictions go? Are we going to have to make this? I don't this... think it would be a fun pay-per-view if we were on the same page. Let's be honest. We're always sort of in, in competition at some point. That is very true. So maybe we'll have to make it, we'll have to spike this up, but we'll save that for near the right. end of the show. So we still have quite a bit to talk about, including a Falls Count Anywhere matchup in which we have Eddie Edwards taking on Moose, Moose, Moose. I would say he's ready to bust some heads, but his character has definitely changed quite a bit. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, Val, your thoughts on this matchup? Well, you know, I, I hate to have a little bit of bias, but being over here in the UK and being part of WS Wrestling, which if you're not familiar with US fans, it's World of Sport Wrestling, available in the UK. We do have some matches available online, but basically... 
it's an amazing promotion here in the UK that I'm a part of doing commentary with Stu Bennett and Alex Shane. And we had the absolute pleasure and honor of having Moose join kind of the last episode of WS Wrestling as an Impact Wrestling, sort of like a trade. Like, he was just kind of there as a surprise, and it was great. And I'll be honest with you, Nate, like, I was not that familiar with Moose. I, I met him a couple times, did maybe a couple indie shows with him. I thought he was great. But I wasn't really that familiar with the, with the power that he exudes in the ring. He is an absolute powerhouse. He's a force to be reckoned with. I'm going to go Moose all the way. I think he's just one of those guys that he's got the charisma, he's got the size. And above all else, I mean, it is a strong man's game in so many ways. He's got the power in the ring. I have to give it to Moose. You know, the story here that's being told is basically that Eddie Edwards, ever since he had that feud with Sammy Callahan last year, uh-huh. he has just been on this kind of unbalanced, un mentally just uneven deal and he is just basically going out there and just wrecking everybody that gets in his way to the point that basically his wife and everybody else has basically said hey we're going to submit you into a mental institution but obviously that didn't work last very long because of a good old fashion ECW original by the name of uh, Raven decided hey you know what we're just going to give you this you're going to get out it's totally Cool. I'm just, well, actually, he more was like, you know, I'm just going to give you this key. You just do whatever you want. It was kind of like the, uh, it was, it was kind of like the Stone Cold Goldberg deal where he basically just said, oh, I got this extra ticket to see No Way Out. Now, you know, if you see Brock Lesnar in the ring, don't do anything I wouldn't do. And of course, what did right. we get? We got that classic 2004 uh, moment where. Hey, just- just promise me that that if, if I if I ever go into some sort of like psychotic state, please don't let Raven try to bring me out of it. And I'll promise the same to you. If, if you go crazy, I will not prescribe Raven as your therapist. Do we have a deal? Um, I don't know. I mean, I would, I would get the chance to meet Raven. I'd get out of the institution. I think I might have the same mindset as Eddie Edwards. But for the sake of our, you know, you know, for our business relationship and for our friendship, I will make that promise. <laughs> Um, as, far, as far as who I got to win, I'm giving it to the lunatic. I'm going to give it to Eddie Edwards. I think that ever since uh, Moose has been on this deal where he's basically said, you know, well, he made it into a promo in which he said, you know, hey, Eddie, when you got injured, I was always there for you. I was always there for you. Uh, and then when Moose got injured at Slammiversary, uh, how Eddie Edwards didn't, you know, pick up for him. But I also think that I think Moose has gotten very cocky. He's gotten very arrogant. Now, for some people, that works out perfectly. For Moose, I think that's going to be an X factor as well as a a detriment to his uh, his, in-ring style. So I do agree with you. I've seen Moose, and he is definitely one of those guys who can be a huge powerhouse, and he definitely can fly with the rest of them. I am going to be surprised. I'm not going to be surprised if we see him as an X Division champion one of these days. I mean... Hell, Brian Cage was able to be an X Division champion, so why not Moose at this point? Uh, yeah, and you know, I, I think I think they've kind of proven now that size doesn't really have anything to do with with talent in terms of the X Division. And like you said, arrogance can kind of be a, a, a great thing to someone's career and to, to their mindset. But in another way, arrogance can also be a really uh, big detriment because if you get too arrogant, you get too ahead of yourself, it really can throw you off your game. And that might be Moose's downfall here. We're really not sure. So I guess we're going to see. Yeah. And it's it's definitely going to be one of the most physical matches of that entire event, and we're going to see the uh-huh. asylum. Just maybe it's going to have a little bit of redecorating on the inside. So hashtag no regrets on that match. <laughs> uh, speaking of no I regrets, you called it redecorating. That's so classy. <laughs> well, I nothing but class here on the game changer. But uh, absolutely. Yeah. Speaking of redecorating, uh, somebody's face might get redecorated in this matchup. We have the Monsters Ball matchup in which we have Eli Drake, the master of the dummy, yeah, yeah, taking on the monster, (laughs) the veteran of the Monsters Ball, Abyss. Now, here's something interesting that I wanted to kind of point out. I looked at some statistics as far as, you know, how many Monsters Ball matches they've had in the company, you know, who's had the most victories, who's had the most appearances, uh, this will actually be the 49th Monsters Ball in Impact Wrestling, and out of all those Monsters Ball, Abyss has actually been involved or has had some kind of invo- some kind of appearance in about 47 of these uh-huh. Monsters Balls matches. Now, I want to ask you this, Val, just to give you a little bit of trivia: How many victories do you think he's had in these Monsters Balls matches? I would say every single victory. I mean, Abyss has created the Monsters Ball with the help of James Mitchell, which is so interesting and so nostalgic that he's coming back for Impact Homecoming. Talk about a homecoming. Talk about 
uh, an amazing cameo uh, for Father James Mitchell. I think it's perfect that this is going to be something for the fans to kind of have that little bit of, uh, you know, walk down memory lane. And, I mean, no one's more hardcore than Abyss. No one's more brutal than Abyss. No one's willing to do the things to his own body that Abyss is willing to do. So this is going to be one of those matches that I think I'm going to watch, like, between my fingers, covering my eyes. And I just, I mean, it's going to be a lot to take, isn't it? It really is. And to answer the question, he's actually only had about 19 victories in his 47 appearances. And this was kind of really? one of those, yeah, this was kind of one of those things where it was really weird. Cause I remember early on, even when they introduced monsters ball, it's like, well, this is losing. It's like, what? This is, this is his matchup. This is, match. the, this is yeah. matchup. This is his marquee deal. Why isn't he coming out victorious? That's I mean, shocking. I mean, I'm not the booker here, so I can't really say like, Oh, well, you know, this is how, this is the reason why we did it. I, I just think it would be one of those things where if it was a monsters ball matchup, Having you know Abisco undefeated for so long in that matchup that the you know uh-huh. first loss in that matchup would make it just absolutely shocking. That's just my opinion on it. Uh, but it is still, yeah. but he still has the most victories out of a lot of people. I think the next person that even has victories that even come close to matching that is at a seven, I believe, something like that. It, it's a very low number compared to what Abyss has. Uh, so let's get into predictions here. Obviously, this. You came about during Bound for Glory. Uh, Eli Drake defeated a certain chinless wonder whose name will not be mentioned due to obvious legal reasons. Um, he then after the matchup, uh, Abyss came out. He choke slams uh, Eli Drake through a table. Eli Drake tries to sue Impact Wrestling for an unsafe work environment. Uh, recruits Joseph Parks to basically try and help with this legal issue, but. In the end, Eli Drake would turn on Joseph Parks, and that is going to fuel a different fire in the Monster Abyss because you took out his brother. That's not right. a good thing, Eli Drake. So <laughs> I would do that if I were you. No, no, no. That's that's literally just like taking to yeah. It's it's almost like a uh, almost like a mama bear pop, uh, baby bear kind of deal. It's like you don't mess with uh-huh. the baby and you don't mess with the parks. I'm just gonna say that yeah. right now. So yeah, uh, yeah, your th- yeah, your thoughts. Who do you got p- coming out victorious in this matchup? You know what, Eli Drake. I have to say that not to get into like a shoot interview here, but Eli Drake has been an amazing talent his entire career. It's one of those things where I met him when he was sort of a diamond in the rough. He was always a diamond, but the point is he didn't really have an outlet to kind of shine. And, you know, use his talents where they'd be appreciated. And I am so proud and so thrilled for him to actually have this grand stage of Impact Wrestling for everyone to see how talented, how charismatic, and and what what a star this guy is. I mean, he's absolutely phenomenal on the mic, in the ring, with the fans. He's just the total package. So I have no problem saying I am 100%. Uh, with Eli Drake. I support him in this match. I think he's going to do great. And I think he's really what Impact Wrestling needs as, you know, the product to represent the company. He's done nothing but be an absolute superstar for them. And he's actually made me fall back in love with wrestling with his promos and his his charisma. I think he's amazing. Definitely, definitely. And to think that he kind of started off as just a random trio with uh, him, uh, Drew Galloway, now Drew McIntyre in WWE. Uh As well as, I, I want to say it was Eddie Kingston was the third one. I could be absolutely wrong with that. Um, but, you know, seeing him kind of go from being just a random guy with that trio and evolving into, as you said, you know, the great star that he is. I mean, former King of the Mountain he champion. He really is. I don't say that easily. You know, I don't give compliments easily, Nate. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> if, you, if you see something that you like, you'll be vocal about it. Trust me. I know from firsthand experience. Uh-huh. Um, but, yeah, like I said, former uh, uh, King of the Mountain champion, former Impact Wrestling World champion, this is a guy who definitely can go. So, as much as I would love to see Eli Drake coming out victorious... I think that it's only going to be one click, Doomsday, and that is going to be the end oh, of no. Eli Drake. I'm going with the Monster <laughs> Abyss giving his 20th victory in Monster's Ball. Oh, man. I see, I don't want to vote against Abyss. I love Abyss, obviously. I mean, we got over that whole black, black hole slam uh, issue, uh, you know, after a while. <laughs> we had to sit down. We had an afternoon tea. We had some scones and cream and jam. 
And we got really, you know, really close, really deep conversations about it. We're over it. We're past it. And I do love the best to this day. <laughs> I'm still going to give it to Eli Drake because, like I said, I think he's the future of Impact Wrestling. I think he's an absolute star, and I would love to see him win this match. But, again, this is what's so great about Impact Homecoming is that all of these matches, whether you want one person to win or one person to lose, and everyone's going to have a great time watching because it's just going to be a good match overall. The winner is going to be the fans. I mean, that's not cheesy. That's the truth of it all, isn't it? It is the truth of it all. And first of all, I just want to say that just imagining you having tea with Abyss is one of the best <laughs> things I can have. Especially like when, like his like classic persona where he, you know, didn't talk at all. He had kind of like almost, I think I would say the uh, Hannibal Lecter kind of mask. Just seeing him kind of do that and maybe just doing a deal where you're just being classy, you're being sophisticated, and he's just kind of, you know, kind of bashing everything. He's doing thumbtacks, doing that stuff like that. And you're just like, well, it's good to have, you know, tea with friends just <laughs> doing of that. Of course. And you know what? I mean, he doesn't like to talk about it, but it is hard for him to eat those those cucumber sandwiches with that mask on. Also, he's <laughs> allergic to scones, so it was a really awkward meeting. But we made the best of it. God bless him. And you know what? I think we're better friends because of it. But again, because he is, he is you know, such a hardcore icon, I think it's going to be an amazing match no matter what. But I would still like to see Eli Drake take the victory here. Abyss, if you're listening to this podcast, I kind of want to see you do another Black Hole Slam to SoCal Val for this story. <laughs> Pick <me> up. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, the first one, it was one of those things where it's like, oh my god, that's horrible. Now the second one's just like, she kind of deserved that one because of that story that she told in the <laughs> podcast. So if that happens before he retires, I will just literally be like, well, I saw that coming. I mean... I'll literally be tweeting about that all. I, I'll, be, I'll literally be tweeting that all night, just being like, "Well, we saw this coming at SoCal Val. Shouldn't have talked about that allergic to scone story." <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag allergic to scone. For the fans that are listening, and you know, this, this is the great part about it is I will be hosting the live chat. But Nate, now that you're going to be watching the pay per view, you will be co-hosting the live chat with me. We'll be able to exchange, uh, you know, tweets and chat room discussions. And that's the wonderful part about it. We're, we're from all parts of the world. Like, you know, I was watching the last um, NJPW show on Fight TV, and there were people from Australia, from America, from England, from Dubai. They're all watching this show at the same time, and it's a great thing for all of us to come together and to watch the same show. We can comment on the action as it happens, which that's my, kind of my favorite part about Fight TV is the live chat room. You get to kind of interact with everybody and, you know, you know share your thoughts. People love this person. They kind of you know, have debates about why this person's advancing, whatever. And that's going to be so much fun when we're actually watching Impact Homecoming. So for those of you that are listening, make sure that you're in the live chat with us. We want to hear your feedback. Make sure you're using the hashtags and following Impact Wrestling and Fight TV so you can join the discussion on social media. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So we are going to be moving on to the next matchup here on the card, which is going to be probably, in my opinion, uh, match of the night because we have the Impact Wrestling Tag Team Championships are on the line. LAX will be taking on the Lucha Brothers, Phoenix and Pentagon. And I want you guys to kind of pay attention to this number that I'm about to to lay down. 253 days. For 253 days, LAX has been dominating the tag team division, having great rivalries, great matches, and they have just been on top of the tag team world in Impact Wrestling. They have beaten records. They have surpassed a lot of the great teams that have held those tag team titles before, such as Beer Money, AMW, Team Canada, The Naturals. All of those teams, they have surpassed that. So, obviously, with that kind of factor going in, it is definitely not hard to see LAX having a huge chip on their shoulder. But, after a lot of these recent episodes of Impact, Conan has said that he's not going to be at ringside for this matchup. Now, this could be a mind game deal by Conan. I would not put it against him at this point. Uh, but this is going to be an absolutely crazy matchup. This came about a few weeks ago. Uh, LAX just said, hey, let's tear the house down at, at homecoming. And the Lucha Brothers are saying, yep, let's do it. And over the last few weeks, we've seen a lot of things just kind of dissect as well as be just divided as far as respect as well as the just emotional aspect of this matchup just basically turning it into what could be a barn burner of a matchup and hashtag boy howdy it's going to be one of those matches i'm looking forward to especially <laughs> when you have my boys phoenix and pentagon jr involved in this matchup <laughs> 
it's it is going to be absolutely insane. So, so Calvell, your thoughts on this tag team matchup? Well, I just love that you're you're making the hashtag barn burner and hashtag boy howdy still alive. So kudos for that. First of all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you're right, you're right. It is going to be one of those matches that's like you know, no matter what happens, it's going to be a great match. Um, I'm going to give it to LAX only because I think they have sort of uh, more drive uh, personally. Like you said, though, it's interesting that the 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 idea of, of Conan being around or involved. He's such a wild card, and that's kind of why people are so drawn to him and his personality. But I have to give it to LAX. I feel like. You know, we've seen so many different versions of LAX, haven't we, over, over the years and impact. Mm-hmm. But because they have such a historic name to live up to, um, I kind of hope, just, just because made it a little nostalgic, I hope that they would pull it out. And I think that they kind of have the advantage, for sure. I could definitely see that. Uh, for me, it's for nostalgia purposes, it's for the fact that they are indeed Lucha Underground Brothers, but... I'm going with the Lucha right. Bros on this one, so I see Phoenix oh, and <laughs> I see Phoenix and Pentagon Junior taking the tag team titles uh, tomorrow at Homecoming, starting a new era, and maybe we could see something interesting. I th- I would really love to see this view kind of continue on, so that's kind of why I'm having the title change happen here because then maybe we could see a little more of LAX. But I just love the momentum that Phoenix and Pentagon have had for the longest time. I mean, you have to also remember that Pentagon Jr. is a former Impact World Champion, so he's not going to be one of those guys that's going to be easy to beat. So, with that being said, like I said, going with my boys, the Lucha Bros. Cero, Miedo. Yeah, tough one for sure. Oh, yeah. gosh, yeah. And I'm just thankful that when I met Pentagon at StarCast, he did not break my arm. That was one of those things I'm like, thank you, thank you. I, I, I walk away. <laughs> well, that's a plus. <laughs> Oh, man. I, I I try to be nice to whoever I interact with, and definitely, uh, yeah, definitely Pentagon was one of them. So. <laughs> well, your inter- introduction was like, hi, my name's Nate. Please don't break my arm. <laughs> <laughs> next, next time I meet him, I'm going to say that now. I'm just going to be like, hey, I'm Nate the effing, effing great. We met in Chicago. <laughs> Again, please don't break my arm. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty please. I need my arm, thanks. Oh man, it'd be even crazier if I could say that in Spanish to him, and he just laughs and be like, "It's cool, dude. I'm probably gonna break your arm later." Offer that, I bet. <laughs> so now I got something to to look up and learn. All right, so we have our second title matchup <laughs> that we're gonna be talking about, and this is gonna be probably my favorite matchup on the card because I am in love with this matchup. I love what everything does, and I really want to know. Uh, Kind of, you know, your insight as far as this matchup. I am, of course, talking about Ultimate X. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the matchup that I would definitely say is my favorite matchup. Definitely above the ladder match. Because it is one of those matches that definitely tests your upper body strength. It tests every single part of the deal. Because basically all you have to do is beat down your opponents. But then you have to conserve your energy because you have to climb the side of the of the, uh, the the post going up, then you have to shimmy your way across a rope and then retrieve the championship. It is one of those matches that definitely seems legit and definitely seems like one of those matches that would be really hard to just to you know participate in. And bear in mind, guys, ladders are not legal in this matchup, so literally you're relying on up your body strength as well as endurance in this matchup. But so, Kyle, yeah. you've probably seen more uh, Ultimate X matches than than anybody else. So I gotta ask you, you know, how much of a difference is it seeing the Ultimate X on TV compared to seeing it live? And what have been some of like the strategies and the mentalities for a lot of wrestlers that have gone into the Ultimate X match? Oh my gosh, I mean, I have such, <laughs> I don't want to sound like a total pansy, but I have so many horrible memories of this damn match that, I mean, I, you know, I remember just like going into the arena and just looking up at the actual structure, the actual um, Ultimate X, like on the ring, and it was like, oh my gosh, it's so high up, and I think that's one thing that fans, if you're listening and watching on Impact, uh, you know, whether you watch Impact on TV or watching on a fight TV, when you see it on your screen, it, you have no idea how actually how high they are and how dangerous it is, and, and what the the injury factor could be for these guys. I mean, even when they're just walking up there, it looks so easy, or oh, they're just hanging. It's so much higher than you realize uh, in person. It's just so scary, and I'm sure you know there's probably footage of me just freaking out at ringside because it was just so scary you know, to see all these guys 
risking their lives, risking their, you know, limbs to do this stuff. Um, that being said, I hate to say it, but it also makes it so compelling and so, so exciting to watch. Um, you know, it, for me, I, I don't like hardcore stuff that much, but I do appreciate the athleticism of Ultimate X because it's just something that, you know, for example, how do you prepare for something like this? You know, if it's, it's a tag match, if they, you know, how do you prepare to, to be on the Ultimate X? It, it, it's very unique, and I love that it's a TNA original match. I think it would not be a TNA Impact uh, Homecoming pay-per-view without an Ultimate X match. Um, and the guys that are in it are all great talents. I personally have to have to go with, um, I was kind of on the fence with your Ethan Page or Rich Swan, but I'm going to go Ethan Page because I've worked with Ethan and Rich on Evolve Wrestling for so many years, and they're both amazing. Rich is amazing, but he can be a little more um, unorthodox and a little more crazy. And in some ways, that works in your favor with Ultimate X. Other ways, you have to kind of have more of a stable mindset. Sometimes you want to kind of bide your time. You want to rest when you can, bide your time. I think Ethan Page has a better mindset for the Ultimate X. I think it's going to shock everyone and really pull us out of the park. But, um, again, I mean, it's, it's a very nerve-wracking match to watch on TV. But when you're there in person, it's a whole other ball game. Oh, my goodness. I can only imagine. That's why I definitely wanted your insight on this deal. Uh, you mentioned two yeah, of the competitors. Scary as hell. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely mentioned two of the competitors in this matchup. We have uh, Jake Crist, Ethan Page, uh, Rich Swan, as well as Trey Miguel T- T- battling against each other for the opportunity to be the new X Division champion after Brian Cage invoked Option C to get a title shot, which we will be talking about in just a bit, you guys. Uh, no, I think we're on the same page with this one. I see Ethan Page coming out victorious on this really? night. And it's mainly because of the fact that I think that this, you know, mentorship that Matt Seidel has been given to him and, you know, helping him what, you know, look through his third eye and seeing that, having that kind of exposure and also just having that kind of insight from somebody who's like a veteran like Matt Seidel is definitely going to help him definitely, you know, get that victory and get the X Division title. As much as I would love to see, you know, guys like, you know, Jay Christ and Trey Miguel get involved. And I know that there's some people that are definitely pulling out for Rich Swan. Here's the thing. He just kind of debuted on the roster. So it's one of those things where it's like, I think it's still too early to put the belt on him. So who's kind of the next best option? Well, Ethan right. Page. I agree. So, yeah, I think we're both in agreement as far as Ethan Page goes. That's shocking. But I think you also, like I just said, I think you also understand he has sort of the calmer mindset. That's sort of the strategic mindset that he needs. Because Ultimate X... Yeah, it's a physical thing, but it's also very, very methodical, and you have to have the right mindset to be in there and to understand your timing. Timing is everything in Ultimate X. It's sort of like, you know, with the Rumble, they talk about, oh, he's, he was in there for 30 minutes, whatever. A lot of the guys who make it the Royal Rumble, not to do the comparison, but it does make sense here. They're the oh. ones that had a strategy going on. They weren't just like, oh, I'm going to go balls to the wall and just be crazy the whole match. They realize that they have to, you know, have this offense but then rest when they need to and buy their time. And that's what we have to do in Ultimate X as well. I think Ethan Page is the guy to do it. Uh, do you remember years ago when they did kind of like a Ultimate X slash Royal Rumble type matchup at a event? It, it was one of those events where they kind of like restructured the Ultimate X. They had that kind of, uh, I think it was like a steel uh, part to it instead of, the, uh, instead of the ropes. I think it was back when they were still like hyping up, you know, the the Elevation X match as one of their next marquee matches. Oh, I don't remember the, the Royal Rumble feel of it, but I remember the Elevation. Yeah, the Elevation, that was like, <laughs> it's like, let's take a great idea and expound upon it. It's like, actually, it was just a great idea in itself, so let's just keep it there. That's what I thought anyway. <laughs> well, basically, what, what they did was that they had, you know, like every certain periods of time, somebody new would come in, then, you know, it, you could be eliminated by being thrown over the top rope, both feet hitting the floor, blah, blah, blah. But then when the last competitor came in, then it was like, okay, that rule is neutralized. Now we're making it into an Ultimate X matchup. So it literally could have been like a 15-man Ultimate X matchup, or it could have been a two-man Ultimate X match, depending on how it went. But I do remember during that matchup, I believe Christopher Daniels won that one. So, rightfully so. He's definitely one of the originators of Ultimate X. And, again, we I talked about this earlier uh, first major matchup I saw was that Ultimate X match where Christopher Daniels won the title from Samoa Joe and then 
got to see what basically happened a few nights after. Oh dear lord, that was that was one of those nights where I'm like, oh wow, this is uh, this is wrestling. Holy cow! Oh my god, Samoa Joe just killed him. And then I had to look back at like the rivalry beforehand, and I thought, and I saw you know the build up that they had for Daniels and Samoa Joe, and I'm just like, oh gosh, this got worse. This is not. This is no. No, I don't want Daniels to die. There's so many moments no. where I'm just like... But, but, but isn't it like, don't you associate Daniels with Ultimate X? I associate Daniels, I associate Kazarian for sure. They were always the Ultimate X guys. Um, Sanjay did some amazing things. I mean, there's, there's so many guys that made it the match that it is today. And I think of those guys immediately, especially Daniels for sure. Oh, yes. I definitely do agree with you there. I mean, one of my favorite Ultimate X moments was during uh, No Surrender 2006 where they had the tag team Ultimate X and Daniels did that deal where he was on top of one of the pillars and then he just basically just flew to the center of the Ultimate X to retrieve the tag titles. That was one of those moments where it was like, oh, okay, that's smart and that is also risky, but I like it, but I like it. Daniels, awesome mindset, awesome. Just, uh-huh. <laughs> just Daniels is awesome. Why hasn't WWE signed him yet? I have no idea. But honestly, I, I think, know. but it's one of those things where it's like, I kind of like where he is right now. Him and Kazarian and, uh, Scor- and Scorpio, just, just awesome. Just l- let them be them. I, and honestly, oh, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just one of those things where just let, you know, bad influence or, uh, SoCal uncensored now that they're called, just let them be them and feel free to worship them. Sorry. Are we past that point now? Are we past that gimmick? No, that, that, that's always that. And the thing is, like, it's so funny for me because my first show, like, my, I think my second or third show ever, my first show was with Frankie Kazarian. I think my second or third show was with Daniels, and they're kind of a package deal. So they were always in the same shows with me. Scorpio Sky was on all of my first shows with me. So it's like, you know, SoCal Uncensored, I don't know if people know this, quick little tidbit, they were the website that their message boards are why I be kind of came a thing talked about in wrestling because people kept saying, oh, who's this girl that keeps showing up to the indie shows with the legs because I wore a short skirt and that <laughs> became my thing and then I started to manage and then it's always been, and it's another reason why it's kind of a nice nod to SoCal and censor that I was SoCal Val. And it's funny because everyone's like, oh, you should manage them. And it's like, yeah, but it's, they're right in the sense that, like, I lived in SoCal for, like, you know, especially at that point. As I lived there, I probably moved away, like, within a year. I lived in Orlando mostly. And now I live in England for, like, the last two and a half years. So I'm not really geographically desirable, but I, my, my heart still supports the SoCal scene and the SoCal boys are some of my best friends. And I, if I, even if I wasn't friends with these guys, I'd be big fans of theirs because they're that good. But, yeah, I love all those guys, and I, I think that – it's going to be so interesting and so great to see the Ultimate X match uh, revived for Impact Homecoming and to see these guys sort of pay homage or homage to these guys who have, who have paved the way. And I, I will say now, I know we're going to talk, maybe talk about it at the end, I'm hoping to goodness there's going to be some surprises, some nostalgic moments. I mean, I'm hoping for like, I mean, I'll just say it. I want like an Elix Skipper sighting. I want like a Sonny Siaki sighting. I want some, some old school... Shark Boy, Jerry Lynn, I would love to see some old TNA originals. I should have used the word old. Seasoned <laughs> <laughs> TNA impact guys there. I, that, that would be personally gratifying for me. So that's another reason that I'm really excited to tune in um, on, uh, tomorrow for the, for the Impact Homecoming. I would love for them to do a little nod to the TNA originals. You know, James Storm, for example, he's got to show up, right? Oh, that would just be beautiful. And first of all, I am going to add that. Uh, <laughs> I'm going. I'm going to add the hashtag geographically desirable on this thing because <laughs> that, that is that is awesome. We usually have at least like five, don't we? Uh, roughly, yeah. But we, I think we're already at like the three point marker right now. So, <laughs> so I well, think. Well, damn it! It's an exciting night. We're allowed like we usually do three. We'll do like seven. But that sounds fair to me. <laughs> yes. Totally okay with this. Uh, speaking about a match that's definitely going to get a lot of hashtags, we definitely have to talk about the Impact uh, Knockouts Championship matchup in which we have Tessa Blanchard taking on Taya Valkyrie. And to add a little more fuel to the fire, Gail Kim is going to be the special guest referee for this matchup. Now, obviously, guys, when I said TNA Originals, I definitely will say that the first two people that come to mind is indeed my co-host, SoCal Val, but also the second one is Gail Kim. Aww. She was definitely one of the first two women that I remember seeing on that show that just really stood out to me. I just remember watching and thinking, wait, that's that's Gail Kim. Is she, isn't she in WWE? Nope, she got released. Oh, uh, 
Okay, that's that that's new. And then just seeing her <laughs> evolve and seeing her become one of the best female wrestlers, honestly, of all time. I'm going that far, ladies and gentlemen. She is one of those women that definitely deserves every single accolade that she's earned, every uh-huh. single accomplishment. She has definitely achieved, it has been well-earned, well-deserved, and now she's coming back for Homecoming, the place that she made, I think, honestly, made her, you know, made her name first known, and now she's going to be the guest referee for a championship that she won on precedent, I believe it was maybe six, seven times, if I'm not mistaken. She definitely holds some kind of record for the Impact uh, Knockouts Championship. The story here with Tessa Blanchard and Taya Valkyrie is so very well done, because Tessa Blanchard is just basically showing that, hey, I'm the best, I have the belt to prove it, and Taya Valkyrie is just trying to prove that, hey, I'm going to take that belt away from you. They had a great matchup at Bound for Glory, the build-up here has been just absolutely fantastic, even to the point where we're seeing a different side of the women's wrestling aspect, in which Tessa Blanchard has literally taken it to officials. She has beaten them down. She has intimidated them. It is one of those things where it's like, oh, wow, this is this is completely different from what we're used to. And that, of course, got the eye of Gail Kim. She got involved, and that is why she's involved in this matchup, because, honestly, Gail Kim is as tough as they come, and it's going to be very hard to intimidate somebody like Gail Kim. I totally agree, and I, I think that she's the perfect buffer between these two powerhouses. And I have to say that I've seen a lot of Taya and a lot of Tessa. Tessa was in Shine quite a bit. I've seen so much of Taya on the indie scene and on Impact Wrestling watching, you know, usually on the Fight TV app. And they're both so amazing. Um, While Tessa has, you know, that pedigree, you know, she's a Blanchard. It's it's well ingrained in her. I will say that Taya always excites me more. And there's that's not, that's not a knock to either woman. But I just feel like Taya has that, she has more of a fire, and I love that about her. Um, I feel like she's such a star, and I think that Gail, you know, being the buffer is going to make it really even. It's going to make it really fair. Um, but I, I'm going to give it to Taya because I think she, she just makes a great champion. She's a very positive person. She looks the part. She, she's amazing in the ring. She's just an all-around total package Amazing. She's everything you would want in a female wrestling superstar. Uh, and, and Tessa is as well, but I really feel like it's Taya's time. Tessa's had her run, and she's done so. I saw her at All In, for example. She was amazing. But I think Taya really is going to carry that torch into this new 2018, 2019 New Year and really you know, blaze the trail for so many women, like we were talking about with Jordan Grace and Kira Hogan and, and these girls on the indie scene that are coming in and absolutely smashing it. But I think it goes to Taya. I think it's really her time. I'm a big fan of hers. I would love to see her get this win. What about you? Honestly, <clears throat> this is one of those matches that could also go either way. Uh, I'm not going to deny Taya's, you know, uh, in-ring credibility because at sure. first when I first saw her, I was just kind of like, well, she's just kind of bland. She's not really exactly captivating me. But the more I saw her, especially on Lucha Underground, I really got the chance to see the kind of star that she can be. And even on Impact Wrestling, she's really kind of opened my eyes to the point where it's like, okay, she's really getting credible. She's really one of those women that I could see being a huge major star. That being said, I've also seen Tessa Blanchard, and from her doing you know the Mae Young Classic deal to what she's evolved into now, it's just really amazing. You could call it a evolution, if you will, of her character and her in-ring presence. We talk about this All In. Yeah. We talk about All In, and the presence that she had in that four-way matchup with uh, Britt Baker, Chelsea Green, and Madison Rain was one of those presents that was very undeniable. And a lot of people knew who she was. They also saw how great all the other women were involved in this matchup. Uh, Tessa Blanchard came out with the huge victory. They could have gone either way with that 4 way matchup. But Tessa Blanchard came out on top. And it's because of that reason that she uh-huh. has all this momentum. She has all of this. She has this huge chip on her shoulder. And honestly, she can back it up. And it's because of that that I'm choosing Tessa Blanchard to come out victorious in this matchup. And also, this is kind of an uh, bias deal for me, but I kind of would love to see Tessa Blanchard versus Gail Kim. If Gail Kim gets one more oh matchup left gosh. in her, yeah. I kind of want that. And if it's for the Knockouts title, it's one of those things where it's like, oh God, that would bring so much more prestige to that title. Gail Kim always brings more prestige to that title. Tessa Blanchard is doing the same thing. Can I say hashtag prestige overload at this point? <laughs> Another hashtag, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my gosh, that the, the nostalgia, everything that they have, because we, because you and I both have seen how much that 
uh, title has evolved from people like Gail oh, yeah. Kim to Awesome Kong to Tara to um, uh, to Jade to all these other great me- women who have competed for that title and have made that title so prestigious and made it a talked about championship that this uh-huh. is going to be one of those matches where it's literally going to be a match that I'm going to watch and if I'm that impressed I'm literally going to say hey WWE top this there's your 2019 yeah. goals <laughs> And in honestly, and I don't get used to it, but I will agree with you here. <laughs> in the sense Whoa. that you, there's really, you, you, you can't, I know, let's get that on record. I, I think it's we're recording right now, so you can't ever let me forget that one. <laughs> but I, I will say that I agree with you in the sense that Tessa is certainly someone who's proven herself, and she's she's a great competitor, and she is the total package. Um, and, and oh my gosh, her, her, her at All In, I mean, she was so impressive. I was there physically watching it. You know, you and I talked that week. She was so impressive and so great. But I just feel like Taya, to me personally, is just a little more exciting. I, I would like to see her, her, her win. But at the same time, it's going to be a great match. And to add Gail Kim into the mix, what a beautiful way to kind of give a little nod to the, the, the original Impact Knockouts. And I, that, that's probably, to me, there's so many great matches on the card. That's going to be the match that I want to see most. That's my kind of main event of the night. Well, speaking of main event, perfect transition to the main event, which is for the Impact World Championship, Johnny Impact, a.k.a. John Morrison, a.k.a. Mm -hmm. Johnny Mundo, a.k.a. Johnny, don't call me Monday Nitro, uh, will be defending his world title against the man. No, he's not a man. He's a machine. Cage. So, Brian Cage held the X Division title for quite some time. And then on an episode of Impact, he said, I'm invoking option C. Now, for those of you that don't know what option C is, a few years ago, there was a certain superstar by the name of Austin Aries. Oh, gosh, that kind of that kind of gets a bad taste in my mouth. I'm sorry. I, I was a big fan of Austin Aries for a while, but now it's just like, hmm. Uh, he basically so came much. up. He, what? May I ask why? What's going on with that? I think it might be because of his attitude change. Ever since he left WWE, he kind of, had this attitude change of thinking like, you know, he's the best, he's the greatest, and he's making it seem like, oh, you know, everything should be about me, 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 and there's no better example of that than what happened at Bound for Glory. Uh, Johnny Impact uh-huh. hit the, you know, well, a lot of people know it as the Starlight Pain, a lot of people know it as the uh, the end, end of days, whatever they, whatever they want to call it. Uh, Johnny Impact won the Impact World title. Then Austin Aries just got up, no sold the move, said a couple words to uh, to Cyrus Don Canales, and then he went up the stage. He did a double bird deal, left, and it's one of those things where it's like you you took away from his moment. This was something where you know it should be about the winner at this point. I'm not one of those people that you know should say it should always be about the winner, but this is one of those things where it's like you just took away something that should have been Johnny Impacts. This is a guy who literally reinvented himself and became one of the best, you know, independent athletes in wrestling. And oh, he's amazing, gonna, yeah. And, and, he, and he just shows a bitter side to it. So that's the main thing where it was just like, I really do not like this guy anymore. I used to. I loved the fact that mm-hmm. he was the innovator of Option C. Uh, he brought it up to Mr. Hogan, brother, 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 that, hey, basically I want to do this. I want anybody who has this Activision title that they can trade this in for an opportunity at the world title, and it used to be at Destination X, but I guess Option C is kind of a little bit of a Lucha, uh, Lucha Underground aspect, possibly, where he's like, hey, if you can yeah. build Option C, uh, go for it. And honestly, that just makes the X Division title that much more prestigious, in my opinion. But obviously, you know, Brian Cage invokes Option C. He says that he's going to cash him for a title shot at Homecoming, and it's just been a really interesting story between the two of them. Definitely personal between the two, especially this past week where Brian Cage hit a clothesline on impact by accident, costing them the matchup against the Lucha Brothers, and they got into a massive brawl where, no surprise, they got referees involved, not enough. They got security involved, not enough. They got the superstars involved. It seemed like it was enough, but at the same time, when these two guys go at each other. This is literally going to be like Zeus versus Hades against each other. This is going to be a clash of the titans when we have Johnny Impact uh-huh. and Brian Cage battle against each other. And honestly, I can't think of a other time that these two have fought against each other. I don't even think they competed against each other at Lucha Underground, if I'm not mistaken. I could be completely wrong, 
But one other aspect statistic that I want to bring this in is the option C uh, statistic. 50% of the people that have cashed in have won the title, and 50% who have cashed in have lost in that title matchup. So it's basically uh, two and two. So the question is, is Brian Cage going to be a part of the 50% that wins the title, or is he going to be a part of the 50% that loses that championship opportunity? Uh, starting with you, Val, your thoughts on this matchup, and who do you have to win and why? That, that's an amazing uh, element that you're putting into it, the statistics, because I feel like um, you know it could work for or against you. I'm going to go with Johnny Impact for many, many reasons. I, I think Brian Cage is great. Um, I just feel like, like you said, Johnny Impact has had such an amazing evolution. I mean, to go from company to company and be successful in each one. And yes, he has a lot of names, a lot of hashtags, a lot of different uh, personas. He's always remained himself. He's always remained really, really talented and really, really exciting to watch. I mean, I worked with him uh, extensively here in, in England with Five Star Wrestling. He was a great talent there. Um I was always a fan of his on TV, to be honest. I was a big Eminem fan, and I thought that he was always such a superstar. But then I met him in person, and I thought, wow, this guy really has a handle on, you know, how to be a performer and just how he is with the fans and his charisma and his in-ring work is just absolutely stellar, total professional, top to bottom, amazing guy. And that made me gain a lot of respect for him. But like like you said, he's been through so many different um, transitions. And he's re- the thing is, he's remained himself. So people are trying to reinvent themselves. You know, WWE, they have a name. They sort of, like, lose who they are. And they try all these different looks, these different moves. He's had a lot of different names, but let's be honest, he's always remained himself and the talented guy that he is, the star that he is. And I think he's just somebody who's going to endure being a star for a long time. I think he makes a, makes a great champion. If I had a wrestling company, I'd want him to be the champion of my company. I think he's that talented. I have to go Johnny Impact. All the way. I mean, there's no question in my mind. I like Brian Cage, but I think that Johnny Impact is just on a whole other level, um, professional-wise, talent-wise, charisma, star power-wise, no matter what. No, definitely. And one thing I should definitely mention is probably going to be an X factor in this matchup is going to be probably the... Jeez, oh, I don't even know how to really even call him. I'm literally probably going to call him the, the silent assassin, the guy who can uh-huh. literally just bash somebody's head in with a brick. That being... Uh, Killer Cross. He's going to probably play an X Factor in this matchup. I love him. Yeah. <laughs> I think that he has definitely been trying to prove to Johnny Impact that, hey, you're going to need my help when you're taking on Brian Cage. I don't see Johnny Impact, you know, enlisting the help of Killer Cross, but I do see Killer Cross playing a factor in here to, again, prove that he can be an asset to Johnny Impact. And it's because of that reason that I do see Johnny Impact coming out victorious in this matchup. And as much as I love Brian Cage, he is definitely a machine. I do believe that when he hits that, let's face it, I know it as the, the Steiner screwdriver that uh, suplex into a pile driver that he does, which is awesome. It, it's going to take one of those to crown a new champion, but I think that, like I said, Killer Cross is going to be a bit of an X factor in this matchup. So we'll definitely have to wait and see. Uh, we are going to have to wait too long, guys. It's going to be 24 hours. To do that. So that has been the entire Impact Wrestling Homecoming card. That has been our predictions, you guys. So I think it's only fair that since it is indeed another deal, it's another prediction battle between myself and SoCal Val, that we actually up the ante on this one. So I've been trying to think to myself, well, what could be a really good thing to ante up for this one? Okay. So, Val, you remember a few years ago where we had. A kind of bet, and basically the loser had to do a, a tweet created by the winner. I don't know if you remember that punishment. Well, well, I sort of tried <laughs> to block that out of my mind, except for the fact that I usually win. So yes, I do. <laughs> and, and don't worry, it's not going to be a John Cena related one because let's face it, Becky Lynch just burned oh, John. <laughs> but, but let's face it, that that uh, Becky Lynch kind of burned John Cena this week, and I'm like, you know what? I don't need to say anything more. I think Becky Lynch just handled that. So, well, so... so <laughs> she did your job for you. I oh, yeah. So so that'll be if I win that you have to do a tweet that I deal. You know, but if you win, I already know that if you guys listen, look on her Patreon page, definitely go support her. Be a Patreon backer. Definitely cheap plug for that. No regrets. Yay! Um, one thing that we definitely mentioned was that 
was that Val was talking a bit about, you know, getting back to the gym, just having a you know good old time there. And I made a joke, just like, would you like a cookie for your hard work? And you made the comment, you said, I worked about an hour, okay, so I think I deserve three cookies and a bracelet. Yeah. So, so that that is definitely going to be something that you'll be getting the next time we meet. Uh, definitely going to be talking about that in just a minute. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to add a little bit more of a, <clears throat> a little bit more, you know, a little more to the pot for that one. If you do indeed beat me, here's what I will do. Just for you, I will create a custom Game Changer t-shirt that definitely will be SoCal California oh. verified. How's that sound? That is amazing. That's, does that mean I have to bake you cookies? Is that the whole crux of the situation? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Maybe, but no. <laughs> just, um, <laughs> No, I, th- I think it'd just be one of those things where it's like, you know, this will be one of those things where literally I'm showing, you know, good harmony, just good old fashioned sportsmanship to my greatest rival, but also one of the best people that I could ever ask to be on this podcast. Oh, so thank Val. you. So I think that would be kind of fun. So we'll definitely have to keep you guys informed about, you know, who, who wins, who loses, but it's going to be a night that you definitely do not want to miss out on. Like we said, T- TNA Impact Wrestling Homecoming is tomorrow, you guys. It's live on pay-per-view as well as on Fight TV. We talked a little bit about how you guys can, you know, enter for three through us by, you know, retweeting our tweet, as well as following us, as well as the Fight TV uh, Twitter account, and listing your favorite Impact Wrestling wrestler on the in the comment section of that tweet. So the other thing that I've been doing is that I've been asking this question in which if you people get it right, for those of you listen to my podcast, then you will be the second person that I will give a code to, and you will get to watch the Fight TV uh, stream for Impact Wrestling Homecoming for free. And I'm going to ask you this question, Val, since you are indeed the TNA or it, original knockout, in my opinion. Uh, <clears throat> so the question that I have been asking is, who is the first ever... TNA World Heavyweight Champion. Oh gosh, as in ever, ever? As in ever, ever. I have to say Jeff Jarrett. Oh, so close, but sadly no. Really? <laughs> nope, it's not really? Jeff Jarrett. So I'm, I'm actually going to reveal it right now, you guys. I was going to wait until tomorrow, but I thought, you know what? Good harmony. Some people probably don't know. Uh, the That's first ever, shocking. Yeah, the first ever TNA World Heavyweight Champion was actually... Kurt Angle, and for really? the, yep, for those of you that might disagree with me, it's like no, it wasn't. It was Ken Shamrock. No, 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 no. Here's my lo- logic on this: when they started TNA out, they actually had a dealership with uh, NWA, so that was when uh-huh. they had you know the NWA World oh, Title incorporated to that. Mm-hmm. So some people could argue, but it was the NWA TNA title. It still was not just the TNA title. You have to remember that when they had that deal expire with NWA. They had to create their own titles, and the first champion was indeed the Olympic gold medalist, future TNA, as well as WWE Hall of Famer, Kurt Angle. Well-deserved, and honestly, Kurt, it's always good to see you back on TV whenever you just chant the whole you suck deal. Love it. So, with... Isn't he the best ever? Oh, gosh, he is. We don't deserve a, a huge premier athlete like Kurt Angle. I'm just stating that right off the bat. All right, so with that being said, obviously... There's a lot of cheap plugs that are going to be happening right here, you guys, so definitely enjoy them. So, Calvel, where can people find you? But also, do you have any interesting, crazy events that are going to be coming up within the next few months? I sure do. You know, I've got uh, WS Wrestling has a tour here in the UK. It starts January 18th. If you go to WSWrestling.com uh, or just follow at WLS Wrestling on Twitter, you'll see where I'm going to be. I've got a lot coming up with that, a lot of um, uh, exciting things coming up for WrestleCon with Fight TV um, for WrestleMania weekend. Now, Fight TV, you know, the, the great thing is, Nate, now that you're an official friend of Fight TV, we are going to be attacking this pay-per-view from all different angles. We'll be in the live chat room. We've already got this podcast. We've given our predictions. But the point is we want to hear from you, the fans, and make sure you're using the official hashtag, which is hashtag Impact Homecoming, to share your thoughts and feedback about who you think is going to come out as a victorious team, superstars of Impact coming out. Um, and you know what? When we're in the live chat, Nate hopefully will be there with me. We can discuss the action as it happens which is super exciting, and yeah, it's been such fun, because I feel like 
as somebody who was with Impact for about nine years um, and was a fan of it before that, it's so cool to see how it's evolved, how the new superstars are taking over, and how the girls and guys are just making it a company to want you to know, want to be. A lot of these guys in the UK, for example, love Impact Wrestling, and it's somewhere that they want to be. So it's a testament to how the new roster has made it such a great company to work in. And you know, girls like Gail who are there, you know, carrying the torch. Guys like Sanjay who are in the back, you know, uh, carrying the torch. So it's it's really evolved into a great company, and it's so nice to see them doing well. So the fact that you and I Nate, can can be a part of Impact Homecoming in this way with Fight TV is amazing. So I really look forward to it. It is going to be awesome. And also, for a little shout out to Impact Wrestling, if you ever need like a substitute announce team, definitely call on me and SoCal Val because I think we could probably put on a barn burner of a commentary team. Of course. I think that would just be awesome. So, uh, one thing that you definitely mentioned in your uh, in your plugs and everything like that, also, guys, be sure to follow her on Twitter at SoCal Valerie and also be a Patreon backer. Go to her Patreon, check out all the amazing stuff that she has going on, including giveaways including great photos i mean honestly if you, you if you think that she looks beautiful now oh you go to patreon you're going to be getting a lot of really good photos honestly her last photo oh, that she did you. the last photo she did i think it's kind of like an amazing dress that's got so much sparkles to it it just looks absolutely <laughs> wonderful and again Thank i will be i will definitely be one of those people that will definitely support this patreon backer because i am also a patreon backer so Definitely go check it out for somebody from somebody who definitely is a backer and definitely will tell you, you are definitely going to get every single penny that you've made and then some. Uh, you, one of the things that you mentioned was that you're going to be there for a thing called uh, WrestleCon during WrestleMania weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's funny because I'm planning on being in that area for WrestleMania week, so maybe to give you guys a little bit of a teaser, maybe there's going to be another live actual podcast between me and SoCal Valley. Oh my gosh, how much fun did we have last time? How fun, yay! Oh yeah, that was that was a lot lot of fun. And guys, you never know, there might be surprises, there might be some crazy stuff going on, you just never know, but just making that a little bit of a teaser if it happens, I mean, it could happen. And you know what, Nate, if I have anything to do with it, I think we should film it live so they can see the video and the audio of this next time. I think we should up the ante, what do you say? You know something? You want to up the ante? You want to make it a video? Well, I will say that I accept that, and I say, let's do it. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Yes. Awesome. Yes. All right. So with for that, ladies and gentlemen, for SoCal Valley Band, Nate the Effing Great, you know how to follow me on Twitter at Real FN Game. Give us a like on our Facebook fan page. Be sure to follow us on uh, Spreaker.com as well as YouTube, iHeartRadio, and now finally back on SoundCloud, ladies and gentlemen, as of today, so it only makes sense that I would have SoCal Val here to make that announcement that we are back on SoundCloud. It is great to have Yay. that back on there. So for SoCal Val, I've been Nate the F. Great. This has been the prediction show as well as the preview, the pre-show, you could even say, for Impact Wrestling Homecoming. Thank you so much for joining us, you guys. And we will talk to you guys tomorrow for Impact Wrestling Homecoming. It's going to be an awesome show. And definitely tune in also tomorrow to find out who is going to be watching it for free. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys.